I've been an English teacher for more than 30 years. I'm also studying my fourth language successfully. I've also tried to learn a couple of other ones. In this video, I'm going to show you how some of the recent AI tools have begun to completely revolutionize the way that I study languages. This is going to be super useful to students, and not only if you're learning English, but if you're learning Spanish, French, and Arabic, and Chinese as well. But it's also going to be super useful to teachers because it's going to give you some really concrete ideas of things that you could show to your students. I really hope you like the video. I've made it super practical. I'm speaking fairly slowly and clearly to help students who might want to watch this video. If you like it, please like it. Please share it with other students and teachers. Please comment on it. And of course, join me on my YouTube channel. All of those things really help to make the YouTube channel work. Let's get started. One last thing, many people ask me how I make my videos. I use Camtasia. If you want to try it out, there's a link to test it for free in the description. You can also buy it with a discount. I've provided a link there. And there's also a free six part course that will take you through everything in how Camtasia works. And I'll also put that in the description. So I'm currently studying Polish, so I'm going to show you the sort of thing that I do a lot in Polish. Now I've got some sentences here that I've taken from a video that I just watched on YouTube that I want to learn. So these have come to some of the difficult sentences in Polish. And the first thing I want to do is I want to listen to the pronunciation of these words. Now I'll show you a little bit afterwards what I do on YouTube to find content because there's some very clever tricks that you can do. But I'm just going to copy these sentences and I'm going to come over to a completely free technology called naturalreaders.com. So let me show you how naturalreaders.com works. I've just come on to naturalreaders.com and I'm going to click on start for free. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off, I'm going to delete the text that's currently on the screen. So I'm just going to click there. Now I'm going to paste in those words that I copied. I'm going to come up to the top here and I'm going to choose, the, now look at all the languages that you've got. You've got loads of different languages and lots of different accents, so for English, Welsh and Indian, Australian accents, Chinese, Dutch uh, languages, loads and loads of different languages. Of course, I'm studying Polish, so I'm going to choose Polish. I can then choose the name, or sorry, the basically the voice that I want to work with. So I'm going to work with Zofia. So I click here. So I've chosen Zofia, and now what I do, just click off, is I can play this, and it's going to read out in a nice, clear, native-like Polish accent the words. So let's listen to that. So all I do need to do is click on this button here, and it will start to read out the sentences. Świt to najlepsza pora dnia. Nie wiem, co strzeliło mi do głowy. Now at the moment I've got the speed slightly reduced. I'm going to put it back to the kind of natural speed. Mainly I do just set it to be at the natural speed, but you can control the speed a little bit. This doesn't work very well when you reduce the speed, but it, it does help sometimes if you're learning the language and you can't quite hear what's being read out and you want it a little bit slower. Um, but I'm just going to put it on the kind of standard uh, level here. Um, Let's just play that again. So just kind of carry on. Notice here at the bottom as well, it shows you exactly what it's reading out. I find this really helpful. Nie wiem, co strzeliło mi do głowy. Zachowaj spokój. Zakaz powinien być zniesiony. Toczy się. So this is really helpful to me. Notice another thing that you can do as well, is you can click here and it will Toczy repeat się. back the sentence. Toczy się. Zakaz powinien być zniesiony. Toczy się. Toczy się. And I find that really useful, the ability to be able to keep repeating and then I will say the words again so that I really get the pronunciation. Now, there is a limit on the free tool. I think you get up to, I'm not sure exactly is, but you get a certain amount of free use per day. I use this tool literally every day because I also study other languages, including French and Spanish. And so for me, this is very useful. 
Now, this can be used in all sorts of languages because if we look here, you'll see that there are just a whole host, and including in some languages, there are different accents, like for example, Mexican, Spanish, 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 and, and, and USA Spanish. Um, and then we've got here the same in English. So now if we click on the account, I think it might probably tell me something about what you get for free, I'm not sure, but there is like a daily usage here, and this is quite useful. So I've used so far 314 of 4,000. So very useful tool. Yes, it's got a limit in the free tool, but I am using this continually and I find it very, very helpful. Now, if you want to know more about natural readers, I've made a much longer video about how it works. It's on the screen now, but I'm going to carry on now and show you some more tricks that I use when learning languages. Now, I'm just going to quickly show you how I find my videos on YouTube, because again, that's something that a lot of students and teachers don't realize. Let's imagine, let's do something in English. We're going to click on shopping in English. Okay, just want you to be aware of this because it could really help you when you're studying. What we can do is we can click on these filters over here. And if I click on these filters and I say, for example, I just want videos that are, say, four minutes long. So not too long, four to 20 minutes. But I'm also going to click on the filters and I'm going to look for videos that have got subtitles. So now all the videos that I'm looking at, if you notice, have been filtered and they've all got subtitles. Now, if I click on one of those videos, I just want to show you something really useful. So I've got here, as you can see, the text on the screen. But actually, the, what I do is I click over here and I click on show transcript. Now, as I'm watching the video, if there's a sentence that I don't understand, what I can do is I can copy that sentence. And Communicate then in English easily. I can do a couple of things. I can paste that into, uh, for example, into Word if I just want to save the sentence. But if I actually want to quickly understand what that word means, what I do is I jump over to Google Translate and then I just simply paste that word in. So I'm going to choose English. Let's imagine, for example, that I'm a Spanish speaker. So I'm, let's imagine I'm studying English and I'm Spanish. I can paste here and I get a quick translation of what that word means. And what I can do afterwards is just copy that word. OK, so if I want to, for example, keep this one, I could copy that and then I'll paste it into that list that you saw earlier of sentences that I want to study. So working with YouTube and learning to use the filters and to use the transcripts is really, really useful. Now, there are some other really good things that you can do with YouTube. And if you want to learn about them, I've put a video on the screen now that you can click on to learn more about using YouTube when studying languages. Now, this is going to amaze you about ChatGPT. A lot of people don't realize that you can just download a teeny little plugin, and I'll show you in a minute how I do that. And it means that I can simply talk to ChatGPT. So I'm just going to quickly give ChatGPT some instructions, and you'll start to see how useful ChatGPT can be if you're studying languages on your own. So listen, watch this. So I don't have to write anything to ChatGPT. I can just simply talk to it. Now, actually, you can talk to it in quite a lot of languages as well. I'm going to talk to it in English, but you can speak to ChatGPT in many languages. So I'm just going to click here. Can you produce for me a list of words in Polish connected with football? Because I'm studying football at the moment, words connected with football in Polish, and I need to learn the vocabulary around football. Can you suggest about 10 words? I just press the space bar and now off it goes and it will start to produce for me exactly what I'm looking for. And you notice now that it's written out 10 words and it's even given me the translation of that word. Now I'm going to now ask um, ChatGPT to, to write a story using these words. Can you now write a story that includes those 10 words about football? Can we make the story about a young boy who wanted to be a football player and was always playing football at the weekends and trained very hard during the week? And finally, he had a chance to work with a professional football team. However, when he started to play for that team, he realised it was just too much of a sacrifice and that he much preferred playing with his local team at an amateur level. Can we use as many of the words as possible from the list? 
press space bar and now it's going to write that story out for me okay now one thing is that i forgot to tell it to write the story in polish I've, it's writing the story in english no problem at all what i can easily do afterwards is just change that okay i'm just going to also ask it to make the story a little bit shorter okay so don't worry if it does something wrong you can always ask it to correct itself so yeah, that story is great, but can you write the same story for me in Polish, but at just a slightly easier level, about level A to B1 in Polish? Press the space bar, and hopefully now it's going to write the same story for me in Polish using the vocabulary. Now, of course, what I could do with this story is now copy this story and paste it into natural readers and listen to it being read out, and then perhaps repeat it myself, focus on the vocabulary that I perhaps want to learn from this. Now, one thing I haven't pointed out as well is that ChatGPT can also talk back to you. So if I click here to turn on the voice and I'm just going to quickly ask ChatGPT to do something for me, you'll notice that it will actually generate uh, a voice as well. So if I click here and say, can you provide me with 10 useful words around the topic of theater and go into the theater? Here are 10 useful words connected to the topic of theater and going to the theater. Play. A theatrical performance that typically involves actors performing a script with dialogue and actions. Act. A major division. So you can see just how easy it is to do that. You just have to turn the voice on and then it's going to actually speak back to you. And again, of course, you're not limited to one language. So you could be doing that in other languages because you could almost use ChatGPT to produce listening comprehension content. Of course, the voice is not as good as natural readers. So first of all, if you haven't got an account in OpenAI, you can come over to OpenAI and click on Get Started. And what you'd want to do, or what I do, is simply log in using my Google account. That way, you'll get logged in directly. And I'm going to show you what will happen if you log in using your Google account. And I'm going to continue with Google. It will open up here, and the one that you want is this one here, Chat. GPT. Now, once you click on that, it's going to open up ChatGPT. And then the last thing that you will need to do is to download a very small plugin. That means that you don't have to write to ChatGPT. Rather, you can talk to ChatGPT. Now, I'm using Google Chrome, but I know you can add this plugin into other browsers. I'm just going to click over here. And just to show you, I click on Extensions. And if I click on Extensions and I click on Manage Extensions, then you'll see that this particular plugin is called Voice Control for ChatGPT. Voice Control for ChatGPT. Now, if I want to, I won't remove this because I've already got it on my system, but I will show you exactly what to do if you want to download it. Now, if you're using Google Chrome, it's going to be pretty easy. Um, you can, as I said, download this or a very similar tool for other browsers as well. Okay, so I'm on Google. I'm going to paste in that search, voice control for ChatGPT, and I'm going to search for it, and it's going to come up first. And if I click here, you'll notice that it says, in my case, it says remove from Chrome. But in your one, it's going to say something like download or add. Oh, I'm not exactly sure, can't remember now the word. My one's saying remove from Chrome because it already knows that I have it on my uh, Google Chrome. So it's asking me, oh, do you want to remove it? But in your case, you would just click here and it will download and be added in so that when you open up ChatGPT in the future, you will have that plugin available to you. Okay, really hope you like that video and please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com if you want more video content. I specialize in, in making videos about technology and language learning. There's loads of different sections along the top here that can be useful, particularly the one on AI and working with ChatGPT. On the front page, you'll also see some of the more recent videos. You can find out about my courses and you'll also find out about any up and coming webinars. Often they're free. For example, this one here. If you happen to see this video before the 5th of September, that might be an interesting one. 
If you'd like to really keep up with my work, the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. There's about 11,000 subscribers. Uh, if you sign up at the moment, there's a free 14 part video course in using technology in language teaching. There are no tricks. I really try to focus on lots of free tools that we can use. You can also access or you can contact me uh, from the website here as well. I'm going to leave some videos on the screen now about other technologies, AI technologies that might be useful to both teachers and students.